Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Q-learning. Now, I know that might sound a bit complex, but stick with me. We're going to break it down in a way that's easy to understand. So what's the deal with Q-learning? It's like teaching machines to learn from their experiences, almost like how we learn from our mistakes and successes. It's a big deal because it could be OpenAI's key to the next big breakthrough in how machines understand and process information. Now, let's get into the details about Q-learning and why it matters. You might be wondering, where does the name Q-star come from? Well, the name Q-star likely has two sources. The first Q is a nod to Q-learning, a type of machine learning used in reinforcement learning. We'll explore Q-learning in more detail shortly. The star is inspired by the A-star search algorithm. This algorithm is used for pathfinding and graph traversal in computer science, particularly in games and AI, to find the shortest path between two points. In simpler terms, think of Q-star as a nickname for a super smart robot. The Q indicates that the robot is excellent at decision making, learning from its experiences, much like how you learn to win in a video game after playing it multiple times. Now let's simplify the A-star search. Imagine you're in a maze and you need to find the quickest way out. A-star search is like a set of instructions in computer science, helping you find the shortest path in a maze. When you combine this with deep learning, allowing computers to learn and improve from experiences, you get a remarkably intelligent system. It's not just about finding the shortest path in the maze, it can tackle much trickier problems, much like figuring out the best strategy to beat a video game. Now let's delve into the six steps that make Q-learning understandable. Think of it as a training pet. If the pet does something good, like sitting on command, it gets a treat. If it does something not so good, like chewing on your shoes, you say no or ignore it. The basic concept is at the core of reinforcement learning, reward for good decisions, and penalty for bad ones. Step one in Q-learning involves the environment and the agent. Imagine an environment, perhaps a video game or a maze, and an agent, the AI or computer program, learning to navigate the environment. Moving on to step two, we have states and actions. The environment is made up of different states and actions that the agent can take, a simple concept like moving left or right. Now let's introduce step three, the Q table. This is like a cheat sheet guiding the agent on the best actions to take in each state. Initially filled with guesses, it evolves as the agent learns more about the environment. Step four is learning by doing. The agent explores the environment, gaining feedback, rewards for positive actions, and penalties for negative ones. This feedback loop helps the agent update the queue table, learning from its experiences. In step five, we update the queue table using a formula that considers both current and potential future rewards. This key element separates queue learning from others, ensuring that the the agent thinks beyond immediate rewards and considers long-term consequences. Finally, in step six, over time, with enough exploration and learning, the queue table becomes more accurate. The agent becomes adept at predicting actions that yield the highest rewards in different states, navigating the environment effectively. Queue learning is like playing a complex video game. Initially, you don't know the best moves, but with experience, you learn to make better decisions. This is precisely what large language models are exploring with QSTAR, addressing current limitations and paving the way for the future of large language models. Now let's take a look at a clip from someone at Google DeepMind who discusses the limitations of large language models. These foundation models are world models of a kind and to do really creative problem solving, you need to start searching. So if I think about something like AlphaGo and the Move 37, the famous Move 37, where did that come from? Did that come from all its data that it's seen of human games or something like that? No, it didn't. It came from it identifying a move as being quite unlikely, but you know, possible. And then via a process of search coming to understand that the that was actually a very very good move so you need to you to get real creativity you need to search through spaces of possibilities and find these sort of hidden gems that's what creativity is i think current language models they don't really do that kind of a thing they really are mimicking the data they are mimicking all the human ingenuity and everything which they have seen from all this data that's coming from the internet that's originally derived from humans if you want a system that can go be re truly beyond that and not just generalize in novel ways so it can you know these models can blend things they can do you know Harry Potter in the style of a Kanye West rap or something, even though it's never happened. They can blend things together, but to do something that's truly creative, that is not just a blending of existing things, that requires searching through a space of possibilities and finding these hidden gems that, that, are, that are sort of hidden away in there somewhere. And that requires search. So I don't think we'll see systems that 
truly step beyond their training data until we have powerful search in the process. Now let's delve into some of the limitations of large language models because there are several crucial aspects to consider. Understanding these limitations is key to appreciating the benefits of Q-learning and comprehending how it compares to LLMs. Firstly, let's discuss the issue of data dependency, which stands out as a significant limitation of LLMs. Traditional LLMs demand vast amounts of data for training, learning exclusively from the examples present in this data. Consequently, their knowledge and capabilities are confined to what is available in the training set. This limitation becomes evident in the inability of large language models to generalize information beyond their training data. In essence, the performance of LLMs is contingent on the quality of the training data, presenting a challenge when faced with inadequate or flawed data. Moving on to the second limitation, we have static knowledge. Once trained, LLMs possess a fixed knowledge base and are incapable of learning or updating their knowledge post-training. This inherent static nature means they can become outdated as the world evolves. For instance, GPT-4's training data is cut off as of April 2023, limiting its access to new information beyond that point. This static knowledge poses a challenge in keeping up with the dynamic and ever-changing nature of the world. The third limitation revolves around context understanding. While LLMs excel at comprehending and generating human-like text, they sometimes struggle to grasp the deeper context or intent behind complex or specific queries. This limitation highlights the need for further advancement in contextual understanding for these models to truly excel in diverse and intricate tasks. Finally, we touch upon the fourth limitation, bias and fairness. This is a pervasive issue in AI, rooted in the data bottleneck. When an LLM is trained on a specific data set, biases present in the data set can seep into the model, leading to skewed perspectives. There are two primary forms of biases, coordinative biases arising from incomplete data and cognitive biases introduced unknowingly by designers or within the training data set. Overcoming bias in LLMs is a challenging task that requires ongoing efforts to minimize unintended biases and promote fairness in their functioning. Now let's explore the advantages of Q-learning or potential Q-star, which could be akin to GPT-5. First, we have dynamic learning. So the primary strength of Q-learning lies in its ability for dynamic learning. This means it can continuously learn and adapt based on new data or interactions. The model can update its knowledge and strategies over time, ensuring it stays relevant and effective. This adaptability is crucial in a world where information and circumstances evolve. This leads us to number two called optimization of decisions. So Q-learning is fundamentally about finding the best decision to achieve a goal. This characteristic leads to more effective and efficient decision-making processes in various applications. Over time, the model optimizes its decision-making strategies, contributing to increased efficiency and efficacy. Moving on to the third benefit is specific goal achievement. So a key feature of Q-learning models is their goal-oriented nature. This makes them particularly suitable for tasks where a clear objective needs to be achieved. This is in contrast to the general purpose nature of traditional large language models, or LLMs. The ability to focus on specific goals opens up new possibilities for applications, such as self-driving cars or AI agents with defined end goals. This goal-oriented approach represents a significant leap in the capabilities of AI systems. And speaking of leaps in AI systems, companies are already embracing advanced systems aligned with Q-learning principles. On June 28, 2023, Demis Hassabis announced that Google is working on a system called Gemini, positioned as Google's next substantial large language model. Gemini is anticipated to outperform GPT-4 across various benchmarks. Notably, it employs a method called tree search, which involves exploring and remembering possible scenarios. This indicates a trend in the industry towards adopting methods inspired by Q-learning for more powerful and versatile AI systems. If you're finding this a bit perplexing, consider examining AlphaGo and its potential impact on the future of AI. AlphaGo posed a challenge as its moves were seemingly uncomputable, outnumbering even the atoms in the universe or grains of sand on a beach. Despite initial doubts, AI managed to overcome this hurdle. For a more detailed insight, check out the intriguing trailer for AlphaGo, a significant milestone in AI history. Go is the world's oldest continuously played board game. It is one of the simplest and also most abstract. Beating a professional player at Go is a long-standing challenge of artificial intelligence. Everything we've ever tried in AI just falls over when you try the game of Go. The number of possible configurations of the board is more than the number of atoms in the universe. AlphaGo found a way to learn how to play Go. So far, AlphaGo has beaten every challenge we've given it, but we won't know its true strength until we play somebody who is at the top of the world, like Lisa Dolph. 
A match like no other is about to get underway in South Korea. They said all is to go what Roger Federer is to tennis. Just the very thought of a machine playing a human is inherently intriguing. The place is a madhouse. Welcome to the Deep Mind Challenge. The whole world is watching. Can Lee Sedol find AlphaGo's weakness? Ooh. Whoa. Oh, is there, in fact, a weakness? The game kind of turned on its axis. Well, look at his face. That is not a confident face. It's developing into a very, very dangerous fight. Ooh, here. hold the phone. Lee has left the room. In the end, it is about pride. I think you know, something went wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's made a mistake. He's got to pronounce America. These ideas that are driving AlphaGo are going to drive our future. This is it, folks. Fast forward to recent developments, Google's decision to postpone the release of Gemini AI to the first quarter of 2024. The reasons behind this delay are not entirely clear, but it sparks curiosity about the capabilities of Gemini compared to GPT-4 and whether it aligns with Q-learning principles. This brings us to the key question, will GPT-4 incorporate Q-star? Reports suggest that Sam Altman is already training the next level in LLMs or AI systems, prompting speculation about whether GPT-5 will feature Q-star or if it is reserved for future models like GPT-6. Regardless, the unfolding of this scenario will undoubtedly be fascinating, and you can explore the full article in the comment section below. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.